Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and this right here is a beautiful creation known as a brown dwarf. Today we're going to be talking about a study that may have actually solved one of the mysteries about these unusual objects and specifically when it comes to the creation of brown dwarfs. Welcome to What the Math. So what exactly is a brown dwarf? Well, that's the thing, we don't really know. It's not really a planet because it's really massive. This one here, for example, is at least 25 masses of Jupiter. And it's not really a star because it doesn't really have any nuclear reaction. So it's kind of like a middle stage or in-between stage between a star and a planet. Now we've discovered some brown dwarfs that do have, for example, planets around them, making them unusual, not really star, not really planet systems. And this one here is actually the closest brown dwarf system to us. It's a binary dwarf system known as Lohmann 16. There's actually two of them and you can see the partner right there, it's slightly more massive. The distance to Earth from here is about six uh, light years, so these are actually one of the closest objects to us. But like I said, we don't really know how to classify them. Now, so these ones here, because they're binary, you could potentially call them a binary star system, which is actually what it's classified as now. But they're not really stars. However, what if you have a system where there is a star, that then has a tremendously large planet-like object orbiting around it. So is this technically a binary system or is this actually technically a planet? This one here is actually, I created to be about 20 masses of Jupiter, whereas the star has about 90 masses of Jupiter in mass. So if you look at them closely, you'll see that they're technically orbiting around one another. So once again, the question is, is this a planet or is this a binary star system? And so the recent study um, kind of tried to analyze some of the objects out there in the galaxy and discovered at least one star system that seems to finally show us what to classify these objects as. Now, originally we thought that, well, if this object is actually created from the original interstellar dust cloud that eventually results in the creation of the star and of course the planets if it's created from this along with the star then maybe um, we could actually classify brown dwarfs as actual stars just not really stars with nuclear reaction however the brown dwarfs that we've discovered orbiting stars are created from the actual uh, planetary disk or protoplanetary disk as it's also known um, and they're created along with other planets then in this case we would probably need to classify them as planets not really star objects but how do you actually discover what it's made out of is it made out of stardust or is it made out of planetary disk and the answer to what exactly brown dwarfs might be at least in these particular systems is coming from the system right here known as uh, new of yukai this is once again a system that actually has two brown dwarfs but it also brown dwarfs that are orbiting a star and when the scientists looked at these brown dwarfs they discovered something unusual and i'm gonna try to demonstrate this here this is brown dwarf number one it's right there closer to the star this is the brown dwarf number two and they're orbiting the central star but as they're orbiting it they actually have a pattern and the pattern is planetary resonance and specifically the resonance here is one to six so for every single orbit of this object right here the closer object does six orbits and what we know about planetary resonances is that they only develop in the actual planetary disks of developing stars now in our solar system we also have quite a lot of these resonances but this is the first time that this type of resonance was actually used to confirm a theory. Specifically that these objects, these brown dwarfs, were created from a protoplanetary disk and not from the star material just like the star itself. Making these objects essentially just super super ultra massive planets, not failed stars like some scientists assumed before. 
because obviously if these were actually failed stars, they would not have this resonance and they would probably have all kinds of random orbits and possibly even collide with the star itself. They would not have this pattern that we've discovered. And just to confirm all of this, the scientists actually studied the system for 11 years and they made sure that they got this very accurately. And here's actually what all of this resonance looks like as a kind of a um, relatively complex pattern with a relatively easy to see periodicity. So this really confirms the idea that uh, brown dwarfs, just like the one I've created here, um, are formed in the same way um, around stars as planets, at least the ones that we've discovered so far. Now I'm sure we're going to find some brown dwarfs out there that were actually created from stardust. And in that case, they would probably have very different composition as well, and potentially also have different features and properties or even appearance. But the, the ones we discovered here are most likely going to be planetary in both appearance and of course properties. So these are just like ultra-massive Jupiters with a lot of mass, a lot of magnetic field. As you can see, they're covered in um, all kinds of northern and southern lights. And that's also due to the fact that they have a lot of magnetosphere. These are some really powerful magnets that are actually creating quite a tremendous effect in this star system. But unfortunately, um, we're not going to be visiting this system anytime soon because it is pretty far away. It's about 150 light years away from us. And um, the single orbit for one of these objects is actually pretty long too. The shorter orbit here is about one and a half years and the longer orbit takes almost nine years. And so these objects are kind of extreme. We definitely don't have anything like that in our own solar system. And of course, even the star itself is like three masses of our own sun and dramatically larger and more powerful than the sun as well. So overall, this is actually a really interesting system that allowed us to discover something unusual about brown dwarfs we didn't really know before. We now know that they can form as planets for sure. And obviously there are some that form as stars, like the ones I showed you earlier, Longman 16 system, but they can be either planets or stars. And this could potentially mean one thing. We need to classify these objects um, in two different ways, either as planetary brown dwarfs or brown dwarfs that were created from planetary material, and stardust brown dwarf created from stardust. In other words, what this study suggests is that you could actually have same two objects with the same mass and actually same everything, even the radius, um, but they will be two completely different objects. One will be a planetary object and one will be an object made out of stardust. They could actually have very different composition because of this and obviously different features and different structure. So this is really important because once we start exploring the stars, we'll need to be able to identify if this object is a star-like object like Loman 16, or if it's a planetary object like the one I just showed you earlier. And this of course also means that a planetary object might have moons around it. Some of those moons might be habitable, whereas the star-like object will probably have planets around it, and some of those planets might be habitable. So there's a lot of things we need to still understand about how brown dwarfs are created and how the difference between them works. But for now, that's all I wanted to mention in this video and in some of the future videos, we'll explore this idea a little bit further. So do subscribe if you still haven't. On that note, thank you for watching. Subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye bye.